Hello and welcome to Creative Lounge. My name is Ahmed Mohamed Bello and this is your favorite show. On this episode of Creative Lounge, we'll be talking about creativity in Nigeria. Um, we have a very special guest in the house. He goes by the name Ali Grema. You're welcome, Mr. Ali. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm honored to be here. It's nice to have you here too. Yeah. I like what you're wearing. Thank you. Is, yeah. this, is this yours? Yeah, it's one of my uh, what's designs actually. So okay. yeah, so it's basically a Adira base. So it's one of the newest collection that I have okay. for SS23 actually. Okay. So yeah. So what do you call this collection? Uh, it's a, I call it the Pan Africanism okay. collection. So it's going to run for a couple of years. Okay. Some of which would be based on fabrics that are very, uh, the sources are very Nigerian or very African based. So we're, I'm starting with Adira and then subsequently I will focus on like the canopy tie dyes, okay. uh, a lot of like basically locally traditional fabric. So your fabrics are basically local? Yes, I guess there's a story to it okay. and uh, you can go anywhere around the world and you'll be buying like different fabrics from all around the world and then Nigeria, why not buy from Nigeria as well? So it's like promoting our culture, tradition, okay. uh, making it global. It's been done, so we need to uh, commercialize it like, and we need to own it. Mm. Yeah, if, if Dior can take the Chinese bag, uh, what's it called, the Ghana must go, which is the origins from China, and put it uh, on the Iraq, so why can't we do the same for our own? We need to, first of all, appreciate our own for others to appreciate it. Yeah, that's very true. Mm. How do you source for your fabrics? Uh, so basically, because I was born in Lagos, I grew up there before moving, mm -hmm. even though I've been here for 25 years, so I have links all over the country. Okay. Um, but uh, I do, like, I've been to Oshogbo, checking out how they make the fabrics and knowing the quality and all that, which is one of the problems we face in this country. People want to do stuff, but they don't want to invest in research. It took me years and years to gain the confidence to start doing this, so I had to learn uh, over the years. I'm still learning though. Yeah. Okay. You're learning in the business. Yes, yes, yes. That's the best way to learn. You make mm. mistakes, you fix it. True. I know you're a very creative person. Yeah. You know, apart from fashion, what, what else do you do? So like, that's a very tricky question being a Nigerian. There's so <laughs> many things I do. Like, uh, first thing first, I'm an energy analyst with the government. So okay. I have a regular nine to five. Uh, a lot of people know me as the founder of Jamrock, or say co-founder of Jamrock, which uh, is Abuja's largest outdoor event as well. Okay. Um, I'm also recently, I ventured into the restaurant business, so I'm more of a restauranteur now. I'm actually working on my second restaurant now as well. Mm. Uh, as well, then I just dove into fashion as well to see amongst other stuff. So basically, so many stuff here, mm, but uh, it all boils down to passion and interest and innovation at the end of the day. You see something like, okay, I feel I'm good at it. Let me okay. give it a try. So as someone who does so many things, you work with the government. Yeah. How are you able to stay creative? What time do you have to, you know, think of the collection? Uh, and all, and all it all boils down to passion at the okay. end of the day. Um, I think there's no limit to what you can do as a person. We just limit ourselves. Okay. And taking risk is a big issue. Like a lot of people are scared to take risk. You must first of all learn to, learn to lose money for you to take risk. Like if I lose money, I don't care, I move on mm. at the end of the day. So I, I believe my job in government gives me that sense of security, okay. first thing first. And uh, secondly, I dive into things that I feel I can do good. And uh, it's all about having a very innovative mindset. I travel out a lot, and which means I pick and learn from things around. I'm like, okay, if I go to a festival in Europe, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Why don't I bring it to my event and do it? So it's not about only traveling out yeah. or, or going to places. It's about picking something. You have to learn something. That's the value 
that you can't put a price on at the end of the day. Okay. So in terms of organizing myself, it all boils down to passion as well, time management and doing what you enjoy. If, it's, if you're doing stuff you don't enjoy, you can't really uh, achieve all those things. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You can't, ex you have to enjoy what you, you do. You have to enjoy it. So, like, everyone knows me. Before I entered fashion, I was modeling for a lot of brands in Abuja. Okay. So, and I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing. I'm like, I could do better than this. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, just start. So, so I, I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed eating food and visiting restaurants, and I'm always complaining about their service and stuff. I'm like, always talking about if it's my place, I would do better. better. And, then, and then my friends that own restaurants say like, wait till you have your own place, you come and tell us. Mm. And now I understand where they're coming from because there's a level of professionalism we don't have in Nigeria, which I feel like we could do better. better. So as a creative person, I'm sure there must have been times where, where you feel like, you know, you don't want to fail. The fear of failure. <laughs> How do you deal with it? The fear of failure to me personally yeah. pushes me to do better. Mm. It's not a pessimistic one, it's an optimistic one. So it's how you view, there's always two sides to every story. Mm. And for me, like fear of failure, it's not for me to fail, no. It's for me to like, okay, how do I protect myself? How do I protect the business? It's towards that. So if I think of failure, I mostly, think about like, okay, I'm doing this event and I know there's a possibility this DJ is not going to show up. So plan B, you okay. put plan C, you put it up. Like if, if the supply of furniture doesn't come, what do I do? Mm. Those backup plans are kind of protected. And if everything fails, then it's not my fault at the end of the day. So you have and it has happened. It has happened. Don't get me wrong. We had two jam rocks that after set up and it rained and uh, Mike, Partners were like devastated. I'm like, bro, we're alive. There's more. We can still wake up and do more, and we did. So I'm like, so you have to learn to pick yourself up. Mm. You have to be optimistic in life. And uh, all this Nigerian factor, my village people, my village people. I don't believe in that, even though it exists. Yeah, but like, like so yeah. So you can't blame someone else for your flaws. So it means you have turned your fear into strength. Yes. Into a weapon basically, to succeed. Basically, yes, yes. Interesting. So let's talk about um, the creative industry. Mm -hmm. Digitization is very prevalent. Yes. How has it impacted, you know, your own business as a creative person? I would say like it has impacted in in, in so many ways. Like okay. in terms of sales for example mm. now like we could sell remotely in terms of marketing because of twitter instagram and all that we're able to access markets before that we yeah. could not as well so it is it has its two ways now like okay. uh, you always that's why i'm wary about twitter mm. because there's a lot of I don't want to say anything bad, but there are a lot of people that are just very aggressive on Twitter. And so I limit what I do on Put Twitter. And then on Instagram, yeah, because it caters to more to the target market. So if I'm doing a lot more awareness campaign kind of thing, which actually have done PR work mm. for like for social related stuff, I would target Twitter. It's a wider range of uh, audience. But if in terms of if I'm doing my fashion or my restaurant promotion or event promotion, I focus more on Instagram, Facebook and all that. So the digital age is here. We must learn to accept it, whether we like it or not. There's a downside to it, but we just have to be smart. That comes with a lot of having the communication yeah. skill set. How you communicate is important. So what benefit has it, you know, been to your business, your oh, creative process and, you know, your perspective? The benefits are very broad as well. So the benefit is a larger target, uh, what's it called, audience or okay. target market. Mm. Uh, the other audience as well, like everyone have access now. With your mobile phone, you can, you can see what's going on. So the thing before, like, we relied on word of mouth, a restaurant, or event has to be known over the years for people to know it exists. Now with mm -hmm. social media now, you can easily promote your place and all that. So it is like 
there is that gap that we had before mm -hmm. that now social media has kind of like cut it off. Yeah. But another aspect to it is like everybody now is a journalist. As a restaurant owner now, if the food is banned, <laughs> Yeah. They just pick it up and just like, ah, the waiter is rude to me, like reporting live, blah, blah, blah. That's the downside the to downside it. Like, you yeah. have to give the, the place an opportunity first. No one attacked you, but everybody now is a food critic and has, knows nothing about food. about food. All is just a fine face and sit down, you're rubbishing people's food. I'm like, no, you can't just do that. If you have followers, you like, Always think of the people that are employed there. Give the place a chance. We're human beings. Our hands are not equal yeah. at the end of the day. If the food comes out good today and tomorrow, and sometimes the food is even good, but if you eat the same thing five times, what happens? You get tired of it. You get tired of it. And that's what happens because you, you ordered pizza today, same, tomorrow, next time, and next you're like, oh, your quality is going down. No, my quality is not going down. It is your palate. And the law of diminishing return. Yeah, so you can't really like, and so yeah. I learned that hard way in the business. I'm like, I take myself as a guinea pig. And I'm like, I can't, if I eat something yeah. every day over a period, I don't, even if it's five times over seven days in a week, the taste comes down, like it is not the same. So you need to give yourself that uh, space where you crave something. Yeah. When you're hungry, if you eat food, it tastes better than when you're full, yeah, right? Cool. So it's just the same thing, you know, it's similar. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> I just learned something new from Oh, that. yeah. You don't eat the same thing all the time. Try something new. Exactly. you get tired of it. Then, yeah, you always need to alternate. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, creatives in Nigeria are undervalued? <clears throat> I don't want to use the word undervalued. Okay. Wow. Well, First of all, you have to understand our dynamics and our, we're 200 million people, yeah. right? And everyone now feels as a creative without doing the work. Yeah. Um, we face that in all the industries I've been. People see you're doing this, I want to do it. But they don't put those years to research or time to research what it's about. No one yeah. wants to be an apprentice, everyone wants to be a boss. So uh, when you're an apentice, you want to be paid the boss fee. No, I true. tell you, <laughs> being really well-traveled has opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like uh, one of the most interesting, interesting cities I've been is Berlin. Everybody there is an upcoming artist, not paid. Everyone is on the budget. Mm. This is Europe. This is the first world Country. continent. And they are raising their parents are sending them money. They do menial jobs just to be in Berlin to learn how to be better in their field, whether you're a tattoo artist, whether you're a painter, whether you're this. And they're paying high accommodation there. Yeah. But in Abuja here, you see people would just say, oh, they'll come to a restaurant or event center and say, I want, I want the classiest of classiest people. And they're like, how? You need to build confidence in your brand first. You have to start with 50 to 100 people to able to reach a thousand. And that's my story, how we started event. I started with 50 to 100 people. Mm. I was so happy with that 100 people. I thought I've achieved the highest thing in my life until I started getting a thousand, two thousand people. So you have to, it's not like we're undervalued, no, but for you to be valued, you need to put in the work. I had to laugh, so really, yeah, yeah. because it's true, everybody wants to be a CEO. Yes, yes. Everybody everyone wants to be a CEO, yeah, exactly. You know? But you need to put in the work. You need you to need put to, in the work. You need to learn, you need to yeah. do research. Don't get me wrong, the Nigerian competition is fierce. Everyone, new iPhone, everyone has, you're like, okay, you know what? Me too, I want to get that, I want to get that. But then you have to have the skill set for you to make money out of it. It is um, said that the creative industry, <laughs> you know, is the largest, or second largest, should I say, yes. you know, employer in Nigeria. Yes. And by 2025, it's going to double. Do you agree with this? I actually do agree with it, because we just call it the creative industry. Yeah. But it is not a small industry. It cuts across more than 10 industries. So mm. it would be unfair to the other sectors for you to, like, diminish them. But if you, if you break the creative industry into different aspect you realize that okay you have 
Nollywood, Kanyewood. As we were talking about the movie, then you go to Afrobeat, then you go to, let's say, uh, the artist, you mm. get I me, mean? the performer, the dancers, and yeah. all that entertainment is quite broad. Even the restaurant business, on the, into the creative as well, the fashion as well. So it's a huge industry. We're 200 million people. Definitely, competition is high, so everyone wants to make something in. in in Nigeria, having like our minimum wage is so low. So even if you have a government job or private sector job, which is even worse, mm. you need something by the side, the side hustle, as we call it. So it's definitely going to double up if people want to survive. But my part is it can't double up okay. until the government plays its own role. So if you go to Europe or even in South Africa, yeah. you have what you call the government grants, which gives young people the opportunity yeah. to access a certain amount of mega funds to start with. Mm. You must have some basic background before you can access it. We don't have that in Nigeria. The government once attempted for Nollywood, but most of the young uh, directors and actors could not access that funds because they need a track record of your audited accounts. Mm -hmm. Your upcoming, where would you get audited? Like, to audit an account, you need to have money in that account and you need to have return. If I can have an audited account, I don't need that grant. So, so that's basically mm -hmm. like the government needs to play its own role. I'm not talking about free bezo. Mm -hmm. No, you must have a one-two track record of doing, even if it's your iPhone, some basic skits and stuff like that. Then like, okay, then you can access it. Let's go on a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, this is Creative Lounge, and um, we're with Ali Grima. Thank you very much. The other time we're talking about um, the creative industry. Yes. There's something very, you know, much prevalent now, and I, I find it worrisome. The university education is becoming redundant, almost redundant. People don't want to go to school anymore. They want to be creatives, they want to dance, they want to... <laughs> They want to paint, you know, they mm -hmm. want to do music. Then what's going to happen to the university education system? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable like answering this question by asking you mm -hmm. a question as well. Okay. What is the minimum requirement for being a president of Nigeria? You need to have lots of money. The minimum requirement mm -hmm. is a secondary school certificate. Okay. So... University education mm. is basically for you to specialize. But as long as you have a quality or qualitative secondary school certificate okay. or the experience all through, you are automatically educated. You can do, you can enter any sector and grow. That's why some countries are removing it as a criteria to mm -hmm. get a white collar job. So, I, would, I got a degree in environmental management because I was fascinated with environmentalism at, like while I was in high school. Okay. But it's not for me, it's not an avenue for you to get a job, no. It's an avenue for you to specialize in a sector. Mm. You get so my problem in the, with the Nigerian education system is the quality. Okay. I've seen a lot of graduates now that are terrible. Like, I don't know what they went through in university. Uh, it's back to sender scenario. Yeah. I ask them certain fields. I'm an academic, to be honest. I don't teach in university, but if you sit me with someone, I'll ask you questions about any field you put me in. Mm. So, but a lot of times I ask them questions and very, I'm not saying go into detail, but just you're an economist. Tell me something about, what do you think about the Nigerian's current economic situation? They're like, they can't even tell me macroeconomic indices my microeconomic indices, all these like, at least keyword, you've done four years in university, what did you learn? Mm. So my problem is the quality 
and not you having a degree. If you're having a degree, mm -hmm. have it because you want to specialize in a field. If you're going to study political science, which I respect that field a lot, make sure you have interest in global politics and policy making and Nigeria and regional West Africa. But no one is the easiest thing, you know, in Nigeria, enter mass come just to get uh, that degree and come out. So you get what I mean? That's what people do here, which is unfortunate. What, you know, the problem now is there's, there's this, um, okay, let me paint you a picture. Mm. There's a, a company looking for, say, a programmer, mm -hmm. you know, and there's this guy who studied computer science in school. Yes. He probably has a master's in yeah. computer science. And there's this other guy who learned on the street. No. You know, he learned on the street. Yes. And they both go for an interview and the guy with master's doesn't get the job because the guy on the street has years of experience. I, yeah. uh, based on my little knowledge in that field, mm. they don't usually require a university degree for that. Well, the short courses are three, four, five months, six months that they do for like, If you're a coder or programmer, it's all about your experience and what you can do. So most times I can believe they give you like a trainee position or test you and see. I have some friends that are programmers and they're coders yeah. and that's what they do. They give you a task to do it and they see how you think, how you do your coding. So I don't think like in that field in particular, it's the wrong field, but I'm just like, I'm going to like say my worry is about the quality of doctors we're going to have, the quality of engineers we're going to have, because a lot of lives depend on those skills. I mean, the future of this country is dependent on certain basic skills that we need to improve the level of education. And I don't believe education, university education is for everybody. Okay. You can attain whatever you can attain this life with just a secondary school certificate. Be an apprentice. I learned from the skill. You don't have to, like uh, in the UK, for example, I know like to work in the bank, you don't need to have a degree. Mm. You can be a, all these bank tellers that all you do is count the money and impute to one to. You know, so you just have a skill. Yeah. The skill Nigeria is very big. It is. It has a lot of problems. And we have so many creatives yes. in Nigeria from different fields. Mm -hmm. Education system is slowing down. Yes. Do you yes. think the present creatives we have can solve Nigeria's problem in years to come? <laughs> I feel that they can solve mm. our unemployment problem. Mm. Because we have, we have the largest, uh, what's it called, demographic okay. of young people in the world, but in percentage to our population. And then you need employment. And uh, I think the creative industry definitely should or would play a big role if they have certain support at the end of the day. But I don't think Nigeria's problem is more governance related. Yes, the young people need to learn governance. Okay. This is one of the problems we're facing. People want to contest for public positions, but they don't know that there's a process. In every step, there's a process you do in government. It is not that biro and paper you hear that people sign, no. Even a contract goes through a lot of process. Yeah. People don't understand that there are regulations guiding every sector. The problem we have in Nigeria is governance, but like, yes, the creative industry is a solution for us for solving our massive unemployment problem, being the poverty capital of the world. Um, a lot of creatives are living in the country because they feel they're more appreciated abroad. You know, what do you think we can do in Nigeria to keep these people? I feel we don't need to keep them. Okay. We are only relevant if we are known globally. Mm. Right? Nigerian art is one of the biggest sellers in Africa. And how did it become that? It's by those people going out. But the only way they are known out of Nigeria is because they are Nigerians. You understand that aspect? You have your, they are going there, but they are still claiming they are Nigerians. They are still calling it African art contemporary, whatever, they are still calling it, but they are still linking it to Nigeria. Last, last, we will benefit from that. Export, exporting our talent is key. They are going to learn something. The smart thing is for them to come and impact the others because they are once the others looking to go out. Okay. If you, how do you value a painting in Nigeria? We don't really value much of our painting. 
But like abroad, you could, they could sell a painting a million, two million pounds, or a million, two million, three million, whatever million pounds. So if you don't go out, how would you, is it here in Abuja or Lagos, they'll come and buy that painting at that price? Well, there's also this, there's this opinion that creatives are lazy people. Yeah, it's just an easy way out. Do you <laughs> agree with this opinion? I don't agree with yeah, that They want opinion. to look fresh, they don't want to be under the sun, they want to work from home. Okay, I understand that. I don't want to work under the sun as well, so I understand that. But like, yeah. they're not lazy. They have a talent. It doesn't, that talent is not incompatible, is not compatible to our older generation where the only industry they know is being a doctor, an engineer, or just few, mm. but like so. It's one thing to say I'm a creative and all you do is open your TikTok and be dancing and just or being a Bob Risky or something like that. That's one aspect. Yeah. But another thing is to focus on being better in your industry, in your sector. Yeah. As there were creatives are not, but like wanting easy money, you don't blame them now. People just shout on social media now and the next thing they have endorsement. So you don't, everyone wants that easy soft life. But then if you're actually a creative, then you must have a talent. If you don't have a talent, then you're not a creative. If you, are, if you have the talent of influencing people by doing madness on social media, you are still a creative at the end of the day. You know? yeah. So people still follow you, so I mm. can endorse a brand. I, I can, whether I'm using someone or something, so you're still a creative. So you must have a talent to be a creative. But if you're just an alte person with your hair and just kimonos or moving, you're not a creative. You're just, you're just <laughs> a particular sector of the community the stands out, yeah. Mm. So I don't, um, I don't agree. Creatives are lazy. Okay. Um, any words for budding creatives out there? Yes, uh, I would really want a lot of young creatives to be professional. They should learn to emulate global standards. It doesn't take much. Read what they're doing in the US, UK, Bangladesh, no, Bangladesh is a developing country, let's say China, Malaysia, all that, and try to put in the work. Mm. Don't say I'm a creative just like that. No, try to give something better. Think outside the box. Be innovative. Innovation is just not a word. You need to find, if your competitor is doing one thing, you're like, okay, I need to try other to stuff. Something. Like when business is low, do promos, do offers, do, read about marketing and sales pitches around the world and say, okay, I want to go towards, but not sit down just like, oh, I'm just a creative, no. Professionalism is one aspect we lack in Nigeria, which I feel we should focus. Whether you're selling chinchin, do that chinchin well. If the order, deliver on time. Not be collecting, collecting orders and not to. So you, I face it a lot. People will come and sales pitch, on point. But time to deliver, that's where the Wahala will come. <laughs> so I feel like young people should focus on being better and being professional. You just heard him, he said, be professional. Don't just call yourself a CEO without you know, learning your trade. Know your trade, know your craft, and be consistent. This is where we're going to call it a day on Creative Lounge. I remain Ahmed Mohamed Bello. Join us, same time, same station, next week. Bye for now.